Dude, welcome to episode 2 of I don't know how many. As you know, I have like two mechanical sewing machines. One that is like 5 years of age and the other one that is probably 10 or 20 years of age. This one is really heavy and this one is just heavy. And oh, that's beautiful. Actually, I'm a little sad if I have to take this apart. Uh, but what can you do? Nikki, never heard of this. Well, this really nasty tent. Um, focus. I think what I'm going to try to do in this episode is just removing the cover and have a look inside at the mechanics of both machines. I think that should be enough. In the last episode we looked at the control and now we look at how it's done, right? So let's go to it. This is just a tray to make it easier to slide the fabric, but it has oh, a secret compartment which obviously is empty. And again metal and a screw here and another screw here. If we compare that to the other cheapo machine, oh, it's, I have to keep that. If we look at the compartment of the cheapo machine, or the 10 years later or 20 years later, it's just fully plastic and clipped together. So it's maybe the reason this thing just cost like 50 euros and this. Maybe cost like a hundred or more in its days. Okay, that was the easy part. How I'm going about this is by the old disassembler rule, see a screw, remove a screw. And then we see where it takes us. And be lazy. Oh, nice. There must be something in there. Oh, obviously. Nice. Okay. That was easy. Look at the back. There's actually a lot going on here. If you saw by hand, you just have a needle and a thread and you just go your way. But the machine can't do this because it just has the needle which is reciprocating going up and down but you don't have the option to loop around and therefore it needs, oh where is it, there, it needs a second thread. So you have like a tiny spool of thread in here and you maybe have a spool of thread up here on this guy, you just set it and thread it down here. And, but when you buy your thread, you just get it in one spool, right? And you need to transfer it from one spool to the other spool. And therefore you have this little thingy. So you can plug the drum for the secondary spool in here. And you maybe like put it like here. And then we see how this works. This wheel will engage into, I think, this one here, right? see when the motor turns and if you put it in here you put it here and when you turn this wheel uh, focal frame and you turn this wheel this will also engage because this tiny rubber ring will get there and this is a really hefty mechanism this got some click to it right that's great and this is my screw and yeah, and it will continue, continue to spool and spool, and this um, the, the thread will accumulate on the on the spool, and then it starts pressing it out and out and out until it disengages. So it has like an automatic shutdown. Really nice, really nice. Okay. 
Let's compare it to the other one. You see, it's the same idea with this one. You just pop it to the side and then it should start. Opa. See, if you go your way, then it starts turning. Let's see how we get in here. And this guy doesn't have any obvious screws up here. Just the screws down there. And no screws here, but maybe, we don't know. Uh-huh, there's one. This doesn't go up. This is easy. So at least they donated like two screws for the... At least they used two screws to fix this in place. And this is obviously much cooler because you have these metal rods coming out here with the click. And you can put them down if you don't need this. There's a number of magnitude cooler, isn't it? Oh, this one. Hey. It's interesting to see the different design decisions they took to save like a cent here or 10 cents there. All when trying to make this as cheap as possible. This is just the roller you need. You see it's all explained on here. If you want to, this is your spool I was talking about and you want to fill it by putting your spool here with the original thread and loop it around this guy here so it gets back to our friend. The tiny spool. Hmm. I don't think so. I think I know what I have to invest in. small cost cuts will add up eventually. It's just to fine-tune, we don't need this right now. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do we get in there? Oh! Oh! You can adjust the height of the of one of the legs. At least you were able to before I ruined it. <laughs> so it doesn't weeble wobble around. But this is a job for me. One. Two. Three. Turns out this is just the, turns out this is just the cover for the motor, and this is the action of the reverse switch. Whatever. Uh, this does not help us, does it? Okay, so it clamped it down, so it will help us, but it's not the final. Just the cover, and it's also just plastic with a little insulation to prevent the the lamp from burning 
a plastic because this is still incandescent. It's just 15 watts and it's the same It's the same for both machines. We keep that. And what we got here, this is, but that's not my plastic, is it? No, it's not. It's really interesting how they did it. Okay, that's just a hole. Nice. We're still not the wiser. This will be the star of the show. So, where are you? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think you're blocked by this. See, this can't move because this is blocked by this plate. And I think this is a good time to remove the needle. Because nobody wants to see red shit. Come on, so here you go. And let's do this with the other one as well. This is the same type of needle for both. They are both really pointy. This is just the plate for the fabric and here's the grabber for below and behold, we still have the spool in there I was talking about all the time, right? So you put it up there and, and you can get the thread on it. If you need it. Right. Well, one thing in comparison, again, cost saving measures. This piece of metal is like a quarter smaller than the other one. Another penny saved. Huh. Plastic. All right, that's better, isn't it? So now I stopped my DNA from spreading all over the machine. It shouldn't look like a murder case, should it? I think I had it apart before. But I can't remember how it was, how it was done. Okay, this is, oh, there's no screw under there. Okay, I see a screw, I remove the screw, and I'm lazy. One screw, two screws. I thought. And actually, this is also a screw. This one, oh, that's nice. Okay, just a piece of stuff with a little spring thing for the thread to keep it in place. So we got this, and here is the bad boy. We 
which was holding us upright. Yeah, I think that is better now. Okay. And we have the same guy down here. Do we actually see what I'm doing? No, no. Right. Ha! There we go. Nothing spectacular, it's just plastic with a window here. I think this might be used to And put this back on there. Yeah, you can you can adjust the screws for the motor in here through this window, like these screws. And we're getting there. This looks like cast stuff, really. Maybe we should keep the handle buffer now. That is not the baddest idea I had today. And we continue on our search. So I think this thing is clipped onto this bottom thing. And therefore we re just remove more screws. Like this one, which is basically just some metal. Just to use, so quite cheap. Just like this. Right. Then we can remove down here and still just plastic hinges with a strip of metal for the tension also quite cheap lots of dirt but no come on there can't be anything left to keep you in place What the heck is keeping you? There's nothing. Okay, now it's just... Up to me and brute force, I think. We're just... I'm done playing games with you. Can't you just live lift up or something you have to do something like this Whew. the window is just taped in there <laughs> and it's also just ABS from 07 from 50 whatever I want to keep this one because we need this to operate the different modes. And here we are. This is. But actually, I ah, we wanted. We came here to check out how this works, right? And it's a lot more plastic as expected. Oh, that's funny. <coughs> okay, this is the same. Idea as with the other one, we have this tiny wheel down here. Can you see this? Let me give you some more light. We have this wheel down here, which is attached to the fly to the big wheel here, and we can disengage it. And if we engage it, then this lever here is also engaged. And what this does is it engages here, so you see it prevents it from reversing. 
we don't have this, we can go forward and backward. And if we engage it, we just can go forward and backward is locked. So you can't unthread the tiny spool. Very nice. Let's put the skeleton down here. Oh, the table will kill me, whatever. Let's go back to this bad boy. I think there was no backwards protection for the other one, with, the, with this one. So you were technically able to um, unspool everything by just going in the wrong direction. This means reverse, and this is the stitching length. Just like with this, and this is the program, as you might have thought. Okay, this is this has an actual hinge in here. This is what pulls the arm up and down. Okay, let's continue on our quest. I see two screws. Uh, one. And here goes the back panel. Anyway, also the little belt, but I think this is metal. Yep, that's nice. Okay, how do we... Oh! See this? This casing is structural. See, the difference between this, this is just a skeleton, so maybe this is just um, a Brandles model, and you can buy this, this generic device, this generic design, and then sl just slap your own panels on there just to make it unique, maybe it's pink, maybe it, it's more aggressive with, with cuts and lines and everything. But this thing is actually, this metal is structural, so everything, the, all the insides is mounted to the casing. It's really interesting, it's a completely different um, approach. That's, the top is plastic, although, but this is metal. And it's plastic again. So let's see. That's again metal with, it's not a spider, it's just thread and plastic here, but again metal, something we haven't seen in the other machine. And then we have the motor here, on here, and this also plastic. And remember the, the leg I told you about on the other machine that was there to stabilize it? We have the same thing here, I think. Yep, it's a little rusty, but... Yeah. But you can twist this one to adjust the height. Again, one of the four legs is adjustable by this thread and they locked it so they have leveled it at the factory and said that's good and nobody has to level it ever again. I think that is a good, good way to stop. So basically we stripped them as far as possible. We realized that this is structural and metal. So this has like an exoskeleton and the other one has an endoskeleton. So this is a, a bug 
and this is a human being <laughs> basically but it's so smooth um, we also discovered how the the thread winding mechanism works with this one it is reversible if you want to and the other one is actually the option to um, to block it from going backwards and unthread everything that's noise so what are we going to do in the next part i think we have a look at the mechanics how the different stitching patterns are selected and used until then thanks a lot for watching